Hi, in this slide I want to uh, address a few common objections that I get from distribution executives about their minimal amount of educational training that they put under their employees. Um, as a general rule, if I ask an audience of people, how many of you have an annual education budget uh, that might be uh, some portion, some percent of your total employment payroll costs that you're investing back into your most important assets, your people, I'll get sort of a, a, a you know, a bunch of blank stares. Uh, common objections I hear are, uh, the first one is, hey, listen, Bruce, we're a lean, mean business, and uh, we don't, everybody is turning a crank, answering phones, doing stuff. We don't really have any uh, chunks of time, like take these people off site for half a day or all day and give them some education. Um, and I would turn around and say, well, then the solution is to have a video based. Uh, program where you watch a, a video clip like the ones I'm doing here that are two, three, four, five minutes in length. Uh, when it's over, ask about some key points, have some discussion questions that make them take the idea and the clip and, and relate it to a story they've had on or off the job or vicariously experienced through a, through a friend or a spouse. Um, but the idea is in 50 minutes, uh, can we get them to have five to seven or more repetitions through watching video clips and telling stories? Uh, and 50 minutes you could squeeze in before work. You could do make it a little bit of a team deal. So there's peer-based pressure and it's a social event to a certain degree, donuts, coffee, whatever. You might be able to get 50 minutes in uh, at lunchtime for some people. Certainly you get 50 minutes in at the end of the day. Um, then people say, yeah, but, you know, even that is, uh, is uh, sort of overwhelming because we're a very frugal industry, or at least we're very frugal operators. Well, you know, we make money by not spending it. We cut costs, in a sense. Uh, so we don't really have any in-house teaching talent. And uh, I say, well, look, well, you know, how about you? And uh, and as far as having to come up with stuff, here is uh, a, you know a couple hundred plus video clips that you can take and use as is, or you can uh, knock them off in a in a in a couple of minutes yourself uh, in house, and use your own vocabulary and your own people, and make it more your own story. Uh, then I'll get well, okay, but if we did that. Uh, that still is going to take our time, the employee's time, maybe have to pay them overtime for the 50 minutes. Um, so there's going to be cost. And I don't think I'm going to get a long-term return on investment because the people we have, frankly, may not have the attitude and the aptitude for learning all that you've put in these video clips, you know, because you kind of get, you get what you pay for. So if we hire them cheap and work them hard, and part of doing that is we watch them real closely and micromanage them. So really, yeah, sure, management is a bit of a hub of a wheel. We can't take, you know, vacations or breaks or whatever sort of prisoners of the business, but it kind of works in a way from a productivity cost efficiency viewpoint. Sure, my business isn't scalable or saleable. I understand that. But, but, um, so right, one point is I'm not sure I've got the right uh, attitude aptitude. And then if I do, the smart ones start to get enlightened and say, well, wait a minute, this company isn't really growing anywhere. And now that I understand how it all works, I'm going to go find a high performance company that's going to give me not just a job, but a career and, and, uh, and premium economics for not just me, but all stakeholders. So it comes down to kind of a chicken or egg kind of problem or not. Most guys are saying, well, look, if I could just cut my way, cut my costs to more profits, hire them cheaper, work them harder, then if I've had more profits, then I might initially think about, you know, paying more to get better people and invest in them and, and get a longer term return on investment. As opposed to, I'm saying, no, I think what you have to do is you have to pay up front. You have to hire the attitude aptitude that's going to support your growth vision. So don't hire people to fill a job, but hire people that you can promote from within to where you're growing to. So if you have a high growth ambition branch, then you have to hire a different stripe of cat that's going to be populating different jobs five years from now, as opposed to if you have a very mature, even sort of harvesting, shrinking, you know, branch, which dominates its niches and it's a total cash machine, but just a lot of upside growth.
Um, then you're going to have excess cash and talent coming out of there wants to grow. So you have to take that cash and that tiger power and reinvest it in another location or turnaround acquisition, turnaround you do, whatever. Um, but the idea is the upfront pay will allow you to get the attitude aptitude you need and then keep them long enough so that you can train them up and they can actually put that stuff to work. And then the service profit chain where you have great people making great service happen, which gives you great service through customer retention economics can happen. Um, in the next slide, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a visual description of this invest forward investment strategy. Thank you.